be to God. You may be seated. If you open your Bible to, in the Gospels, and you look at what's happening on the page, it is almost a given that at some point you will be reading of Jesus gathered with other people, <clears throat> whether he is eating with them or teaching with them or walking with them, whatever is happening, Jesus is always gathering people together as they, they flock to him. And one of the, the key times when this happens, one of the longest uh, chunks we have of Jesus' teachings is what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And so as we read the Sermon on the Mount, this is Matthew 5, 6, and 7. As he comes to the end of this chunk of this, this teaching, the sermon, he wraps it up by saying, Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. When the rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew, the house did not fall. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Jesus is laying out these options. If, if you hear what I say and you act on them, you are building your house on rock. And when the storm comes, you'll be okay. And, and if you do not act on these words that I say, you'll be like the man uh, building his house on, on sand. No foundation. You notice as he lays out these two options, build on the rock, the storm comes, you're okay. Build on sand, the storm comes, and it, go, it gets really ugly. You know what he doesn't give as an option? No storms. He doesn't say, if the storms come. He doesn't say, if you can avoid the storms of life. What he says is, when the storms come, I hope you built on the rock. In life, there are going to be storms. There are going to be times of tragedy and grief. And so, every one of us here, we are either in the middle of a storm, getting over the last storm, or heading towards the next one. And we're praying its way down the road, but there's always another storm that's going to come. If We just hope it's not going to be for a while. And of all the storms that we face, the greatest storm that we ever endure is the death of a loved one. Everything else kind of pales in comparison to this. Everything else is just as small potatoes compared to a loved one dying. And this is a storm that not even Jesus can avoid. We just read a minute ago of Jesus going to uh, where Lazarus dies and being there with his sisters. And, and when they, he gets there, even though he knows what's about to happen, even though he knows he's about to bring Lazarus out of the tomb, Jesus weeps. And so we who say we follow Jesus, we who have committed to following Jesus, when we follow in Jesus' footsteps, even Jesus hits a moment where he weeps. Even he hits a moment of a storm when, when the only thing to do is, is to cry in that, in that moment. And so we, do, we, we will also follow Jesus through, through storms. I have sat with, with families facing this particular storm, the storm of, of the death of a loved one, many, many times, and in the midst of drinking endless cups of coffee and telling stories, uh, many poignant stories, and, and in the midst of sharing meals of all the food that is, that is uh, given to families in such moments, it's, it's the Midwestern way of saying, I love you, have a meatloaf. It's, uh, it just, it's how we say we love you without actually saying it. And in the midst of sitting with families and speaking of someone who has died, who is so dearly loved, I have asked to get, it's one of the questions I always ask, what is the scripture we read to remember this, this person? What's the scripture we turn to in this moment? And the scripture that, that people turn to again and again and again, almost without fail, is the 23rd Psalm. It's, if, if, if someone knows just one verse out of the Bible, it's probably John 3.16. But if people know a chapter out of the Bible, it's the 23rd Psalm. That, that is the chapter most people know. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down beside green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul and leads me in right paths. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. You comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence 
of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows and goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life until I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That, that's, the, that's what people turn to when that most horrible storm hits. And, and, and I think we turn to those words because there is the trust there that we will be led. There is the honesty that we will walk through the valley of the shadow. And then there is also the words of hope that we need not fear for we will be comforted and a table will be prepared for us. And, and so... As the Bible talks about the hard times in life, the Bible talks about the hard times in life in multiple ways. It talks about the storm that will come. talks about uh, the hard times as a refining fire. Uh, hard times as a wilderness, time in the wilderness. The Bible describes hard times in many different ways. But what I come back to again and again is this imagery. It's not the storm. It's not the wilderness. It's not the refining fire. It's taking a walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It, it seems to capture something important a, a, about what it, what it looks like to walk through such a horrible event as the death of a loved one. And as I was thinking about how we as a community needed to talk about grieving, uh, grief, grief and how do we handle that as, as a Christian, uh, I knew we needed to, and especially this week of all weeks, this is a community that needs to think about how to grieve. I, I found myself imagining uh, what that looks like to walk through the valley, and I can see it crystal clear in my head, but I am a pathetic artist. So I found a good artist, and I described what I saw, and she painted it for me, and she gave me a good deal because she's my mom. But uh, she painted three paintings. This is the first. And I encourage you to take a moment to come up here and look at the, the other two, because this lies out what we're going to be looking at for the next month. You see the valley coming? We walk through the valley of the shadow. Thou art with me. You prepare a table before me, and, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's all right there. I mean, you could just come and look at this, and this, this, this is a sermon just right there. But this is what we're looking at today. That moment when the valley is coming. The valley is coming. And uh, this is a moment that, that happens. There are times when, when there is going to be death. I mean, it is going to happen. Of a married couple, one spouse will die first. Of a cohort of friends, one friend will be the first to die. In any family, uh, something is going to happen. There are going to be tragedies. It is just a given that at some point, we are going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And so today, we talk about how do we prepare for the valley. How do we prepare for the valley? And that might sound somewhat intimidating. How do we prepare for the valley of the shadow of death? It, it's kind of a heavy place to be. It's a heavy topic to think about. It could come off as intimidating. But the answer to the question is actually simpler, and it's an answer you've heard before. The way that we prepare for the valley of the shadow of death is to grow in our faith today. That's what we do. If you want to be prepared to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you grow in your faith today. We grow in our ability to walk in Jesus' footsteps. We grow in our commitment to, to pray daily, to find the ways of prayer that connect us to God. We, we grow in the amount of time that we spend marinating in the Scripture and letting it soak into us. We, we commit ourselves to gather with Christians, to worship together, to confess, to forgive, to break bread together. We put our faith in action going out to the world to serve and love our neighbors. That, that, that's the way we begin to prepare. We prepare to walk through the valley of the shadow down the road by walking in Jesus' footsteps today. And, and if, you, if you're thinking to yourself, well, Andy, that's been your answer to a lot of other problems before. If you think that I often point back to following Jesus as the answer to most, most problems, well, yes. Yes, I do. That's uh, the answer to most problems in life. We usually go back to follow Jesus. Do what disciples of Jesus do. Follow in his footsteps and pray and, and study scripture and worship and confess and forgive and break bread together. And these are the ways that we are meant to live. If you want to be prepared to walk through the valley tomorrow, follow Jesus today. That's how we prepare. That, that's the foundation of it. 
And that's what we can do today, and it's a good thing because it's something we can do. And, and for, for most of us, this is a, something we're preparing for that's down the road, right? For me, I, as I think about this, there is no one I know who is ill unto death. There is no one in my family facing major sickness. There is no... Okay, my brother has the eye thing, but that seems to be under control. But... Uh, there, there isn't anything pressing in my life. And so for me, the idea of preparing to walk through the valley of the shadow, that's kind of abstract. That's down the road. I know I'm preparing for it now, and I'm just kind of, I know it'll happen one day. I'm not really worrying too much about it. That's not true for all of us, though. There are some of us, and there are some times when the valley is getting real close. There are times when the abstract becomes very concrete. There are times when it's not just the abstract idea that there will be storms and one day I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. There are times when we can name the person and it's my family member who is sick. It's my brother. It's my, my dad. It's my good friend who is sick. And, and I'm about to walk through that valley and it's the time when the valley gets real close. And we still need to prepare to walk through the valley. And you keep on doing what you've been doing all along. I've watched how some people, when the valley gets close, they start to check out from going to worship. They start to check out from studying from Scripture. They start to use their time for other things that seem more pressing. But i got, but I got to tell you, when the valley of the shadow of death starts to get close, that's not the time to check out from following in the footsteps of Jesus. That's the time to double down. That's the time to worship like your life depends on it. Because it does. That's the time to pray like you need an answer. Because you do. That's the time to study scripture because you need wisdom. And you'll find it. And so when that valley starts to get close and it's not just abstract, but it's getting really close and you know what might happen, you know who it is, that's the time to double down on following in Jesus' footsteps. And that's the time to start dealing with whatever needs to be dealt with. And that starts with talking about it. And that might seem kind of blazingly obvious. If someone is going to, if it is an option, if it's in the realm of possibility that someone might die, then it's time to start talking about it. And um, that might seem fairly straightforward, but I've watched families not. And I've watched families not do it and miss opportunities. We, we have opportunities before the valley gets too close, before we walk into it. Opportunities to do what's on your bucket list while you can still travel. Opportunities to confess and reconcile and, and get straight with people with whom there are problems that have been lingering for years. Opportunities to, to ask, how do you want this to go down? When, when the time comes when we are walking in the valley of the shadow, do you want to do everything possible to live as long as you can? Do you want to... Uh, do you want to do just what's reasonable or do you want to just die at home? What, how do you want this to go? And so when the valley of the shadow starts getting close, we prepare not just by doubling down on the practices of discipleship, but also by talking about what needs to be discussed then and there. Now, over the next weeks, we're going to look at what it means to say, Thou art with me in the valley. We're going to look at what it looks like to walk with someone in the valley because God knows we can... A lot of well-intentioned people have said some very stupid things while walking with someone in the valley of the shadow of death. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at what it, look, what it means to come out of the other side of the valley and to see that the sun does rise. But today, I want you to hear this, this very simplest message. Prepare for the valley. You're going to enter it one day. You can prepare for it today. And if you are preparing for it, if you are spending time in Scripture and prayer and worship and service and forgiveness, great. Keep on doing it. And know that you are getting ready and you don't have anything to fear then. But I want to encourage you to do this and take a minute to ask yourself if you are, because I've seen what happens when people don't. I have sat with people and families in the, in the situation where a loved one has died so many times and, and, and you and I have all seen certain families that when under the heat and pressure they come together and they form something beautiful. It's like the heat and pressure on, on a chunk of carbon and it forms a diamond and it is beautiful and we've, we've seen that. We've seen families that come together in the heat and pressure of the death of a loved one and, and they walk through that situation and they weep and they cry but there is a grace and a peace about them. And it is beautiful. And it is sad. And it's hard. But it is beautiful. 
And we've also known families that under the heat and pressure of the death of a loved one, it's not a diamond that's formed because everything shatters. And the family you want to lean on, that you need to lean on, is not there for you because you, you missed the opportunities to reconcile. You missed the opportunities to, to pray together. You missed the opportunities to prepare. And, and I acknowledge that to prepare today is not easy because it is always more tempting to catch up on your latest TV show and to learn about Breaking Bad or The Voice or American Idol or whatever. What's the newest TV? I, I don't really watch much anymore. It's, it's easier to learn about TV than to learn what Paul says about death in his letters to the churches. It is easier to learn to golf than to learn to pray. It is easier to, to avoid conflict in the family than to sit down and do the hard work of forgiveness and reconciliation. But I got to tell you, there will come a time when you start to walk through the valley when you're going to need to know what Paul says. And you're going to need to know how to pray, and you're going to need family to lean on. And today is the day to prepare. Because it's really hard to catch up. Really hard. So we're going to walk through the valley over these coming weeks. We're going to talk about this. And, and, and we're going to look at how do we walk through the valley and, and know that God is with us and work with each other and help each other and, and point towards a future that is good and beautiful and trust that God is in charge and there is always a better day coming eventually. But today, hear this. Prepare for the valley. And when we prepare for the valley today by following in the footsteps of Jesus, what we are doing is following in the footsteps of him who has already gone through the valley. And as we follow him, we are preparing to come out on the other side of the valley and come out on the other side where there is a table prepared, where there is a cup that overflows, where God's grace is sufficient, and there is the kingdom of heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen.